Yeah, so I just want to encourage people that, um, and, and thank people for all the efforts that have gone in uh, to, to bring about today. And um, I, th I think it's important that we recognise that a lot of work's gone in by a lot of people. And so not to single anybody out, you know, it's a team effort. And together, you know what, I really believe together we can change this town. I believe we, we can reach and equip people for life uh, from... God will give us the skill sets and the resources and you know we are limited by resources sometimes but I just want to encourage you to, to get involved financially as well because these things don't you know these things have a cost financially and you know I don't have any problem um, you know letting people aware that you know what you've got some good ground to sow into and you know our finances are just as as important to get them into good ground as, as to get good teaching, to get good uh, good worship, good good venues and whatever. So so we're going to take our tithes and offerings up. And just to remind you that if you if you want to give a one-off donation, you can do it online. We've we've got access to do it um, via a card reader as well if you need to do that. And but you know if you're a taxpayer. We'll get some forms out, we've got some at home, we'll bring them and then we can claim back some tax from our dear old inland revenue. Anybody think it's a good idea to get some of that from the tax man? Yes. Amen. So, um, so, so they're, they're ways that you can give into this thing and uh, over, over, the, over the years we'll just keep reminding people because you know there was a, a substantial cost that was involved in this. We don't believe that God's arm short. Amen. I'm going to end up with like tennis. I'm going to end up like with tennis net by the time, by the time we finish this. Because there's people over there, people over here, people over there. Anyway. No, I'll just stay focused at, the, at Kevin over there. So, um, okay. So that was just the, about, um, have we got, oh, we've got something on there, have we? Okay, so, um, so I've been preparing a message for a while now on my heart and um, I really think it's important uh, to really sort of get a word from, you know, we don't just want a, um, a wishy-washy, just thrown in a bundle message, you know, some people, I think, I think God's word demands excellence, Amen. I think God's word demands time and it demands effort. I'm not forgetting you guys over there. I'm just focusing because we're filming this live. So don't get offended in, over there, you know, if I'm not paying you. I am paying you attention, but in a, in a different way. And so, um, so, yeah, so I've been spending time on this. And, and you know what? I always think that, um, that God's got a big plan for you. Okay, God's got big plans for you. I don't know where that crackling's coming from, but anyway, this is our first ever, so you've got to cut us a bit of slack, so maybe there's a lead loose somewhere or whatever. So, um, yeah, God's got a big plan for us. He's got a big plan for you. He's got a big plan for us as one church. He's got a big plan for families and for relationships, and... Um, you know what, 2019 might have been an annus horribilis for you. You know what, it, it's not been a great year for some people. But I believe God's got a big plan for you this year. And uh, I, begin, I believe that these are just the beginnings. Amen, River. Thank you for that. <laughs> and, um, but I want to I wanna look at something because I, I'm really passionate about... Um, about about the word and I'm passionate about balance you know I've seen so many ministries so many individuals so many people they start off and everything's all guns blazing and they're really excited and passionate and whatever but I, I want to talk about something today um, that I really believe is a, will be a life changer you see we've got a vision to, to reach and equip people with the good news 
that God wants you well, God wants you healed, God wants you prospered. God, you know, it's a, it's a full, full package uh, message for this town for life. So reaching and equipping people for life. But I was thinking about this the other day that um, we've got to protect ourselves. And so I called this, if I, had a, if I had a Twitter account, which I haven't, but if I did, I would hashtag keeping you safe. And that's really what I want to talk about today. Because if you're laid flat on your back, discouraged, worn out, you know, you're not of any use to nobody. Amen? I don't mean that negatively. So we've got to protect, and I'm really passionate about this, and God's given me this message that, that, that you've got to look after you. Amen? You've got to look after you. You've got to take time to invest in your world. And so sometimes we've got this religious mindset, and listen, I'm going to say some things today. Um, I make no apologies. I believe this will be a life changer for you. You see, because I've seen so many people that have, that have taken on board and received, you know, by grace, through faith, the message of Jesus, and then they've encountered religion. Can anybody relate to that? And religion will always point to you doing. Listen, grace and the kindness of God that appeared in Jesus was a free one-off sacrifice. We're supposed to be human beings, aren't we? But religion, if you're not careful, will get you being a human doing. Busy, busy, always over there and always doing this. And, and you know, I saw, I saw in my early life as a Christian, I saw relationships break down. I saw people get divorced. I saw people separate. I saw husbands and wives and families and children that because the wife or the husband was always busy at church, always busy doing this, she was always busy doing that. Listen, keep you safe is, is what God's giving me as a brand new message for this year. Look after you. Invest in you. You know, um, I, we've had a hectic week this week, haven't we, Wendy? Yeah. Okay, I'll go no more there, but we've had a hectic week. And um, some things happened. And really, it just it emphasised what God was laying on my heart about us keeping ourselves safe. Invest in you. Right? If you don't invest in you, very <laughs> it's likely nobody else will. So invest in you. And so, so there's three areas that I believe that we can invest in. I believe there's three areas. Listen, don't get me wrong. We're not preaching lethargy and being lazy and not getting involved and not doing what we're supposed to do. And da, da, da. Listen, this is a team effort. Together we'll make a difference. And so, yes, as one church, we need resources. We need people to man the sound desk and we need people to man the coffee bars and we need people to greet and we need the... But do you see where I'm coming from? We need to just make sure all the way through this thread that we keep focus, that we look after ourselves. Because if we don't look after ourselves, then we ain't reaching nobody with the good news. You know, if our bodies are sick... If our, if, our, if our minds are all over the place, if we're struggling with issues of unworthiness, struggling with issues of, of mental uh, uh, things, then guess what? You know, there's a phrase that I, I read the other day that says, it's a worldly phrase, but it says that the devil makes work for idle hands. Has anybody heard that phrase before? And really, they use it to, it, to say that if you, if you don't occupy yourself with things, then the devil will get you into all sorts of trouble. Your idleness, your, your, your time and nothing to do will get you into trouble. So the devil makes work for idle hands. In other words, he gets you involved in maybe stuff that you shouldn't be. Crime and getting involved in drugs and because you've not got this. But you know what? When I, when I read that the other day, the devil makes work for idle hands. Guess what? The devil's after busy people too. You know what? 
You can get into trouble being busy. You can get into trouble if you're, if you're in, in a relationship and, you, and you're spending it in all the wrong areas. And so I really just want to encourage you to keep you safe. <coughs> so here's something, we're not brilliant on this behind us at the moment, so we have to bear with us because it's not quite, it's all skew with and that. For us, that are, me and Emily with our, it's like, oh no. But anyway, praise God. I'm going to, there's a scripture here that I've just put up there, Hebrews 4.11, which says that we're to labour to enter into his rest. Now, that's a bit of a, is it called an oxymoron? It's a bit of an oxymoron that. Because it tells you one thing, but then it contradicts itself in the other. How can you labour, which means work, or, or put effort into, and then it's talking about rest. Well, you see, this is talking about the Sabbath rest of Jesus, and, and, and that we need to actually put some time and effort into enjoying that rest of entering into the finished work of Jesus. Do, you say, do, do people understand that? You've got to work at it, because if you're not careful, all sorts of distractions will come and not allow you to enter into the rest that Jesus, amen, Jesus went into that, into that place for us today and so now he wants us to recognise that there's a place of rest that's only found in the person of Christ. Do you see the difference there? But we have to work on that. We have to put some effort into like, make, take, a, take a check occasionally, have a reality check occasionally and say, do you know what? Am I spending my time wisely? Am I spending it foolishly? Am I spending it in things maybe where I shouldn't be spending it? So here's what I just want to put a, um, a challenge out there. There's a difference between doing God's work and doing work for God. You see, we need to, we need to get a balance of like the things that God's up to you know, Christ is a finished work, but the finished work is not in the earth yet. Amen. There's still thunder and lightning and things going on in this room. But anyway, God's still initiating his fullness of his plan. You know, we've got the end of times, we've got the coming back of Jesus, we've got things. They're, they're God's works. But you know, so often religion and church and busy, busy, busy means that we start to try to do God's work instead of doing work for God. See, there's not a, not a problem doing work for God. That's what we do when we come, we set up, put chairs out, we do this, and we reach out to people. And so just watch that about getting busy all the time and recognise that, you know what, am I, am I doing this work for God or am I trying to do God's work? I've got some news for you. It's not wise to try and do what God's supposed to do. Just focus on what God's... You see, we're all different. We're all different flavours. We've all got different anointings. Some are anointed to look after grandchildren. Some are anointed to play bass. Some are anointed to play... Recognise your anointing and then follow that through with, an, with the action of, of, you know what, this is what God wants me to do. But just put a bit of a warning on that. So, just to... to give you it briefly in three parts. You know, we're made up of three parts. We're, we're, what, we're what the world would call a triune, a triune beings. So we're spirit, soul, and body. So the main way we could look at it is that we have a body which has a soulish realm, which is our mind, will, emotions, conscience. And then we have a spirit which was in us which has been recreated new when you said yes to Jesus, and we're going to look at a few things in there. But I just want to look at three areas, and I'm going to start with the body first, because it's important. Did anybody see that? Okay, it's a bit of a joke, that. But you know, in the world today, there's massive fads about diets, and about being vegan and being vegetarian and being this and this diet and that diet and putting this in and you can't put this in and you can't put that in. And, and so that was just a bit of a joke. That's actually a carrot on the 
right hand side. It's not really, doesn't really show it up very well there. And it's just a bit of a joke. You know, but we've, we've, Jesus said this. He said, he said in, um, in Matthew 4, when he was in the temptation, when the devil came to him, he said this. He said, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. See, I'm all for looking after, and, and actually this talk is about keeping you safe. So, so yes, this year a lot of people make resolutions and things like that. I've made a resolution for those who have been following, I've been putting some little bits and bobs out. But in January, the Lord said to me, Wendy and myself as well, put into place a bit more exercise. And so I, I went on this thing of doing five miles a day. Walk five miles a day and then go on the rowing machine and do 4K three times and then a bit of cycling and other things like that. And so I've got a thing on here and according to this at the minute, I've done nearly 100 miles walking since January the... Well, we actually started January the 3rd. So if we're January the 19th, that's 16th, I'm nearly there, aren't I? At five miles a day, I'm not far off there. So, so I'm all for putting things inside. I'm all for getting... Um, putting what's good for you in you. But we also need to, need to just be aware sometimes that it's occupying way, way too much and there's, there's not enough balance in there. Does anybody agree with that? You know, we can get obsessed with, oh, you know, you know I'm not going to say it, but <laughs> we can get obsessed. And, and, and I'm, I'm a firm believer, you know, the Apostle Paul said that all things are permissible, but not all things are expedient, or not all things are profitable. So moderation and balance, um, rather than getting way over on this place whereby it's all about what we put in, and, and, and I'm all for exercise, I'm all for healthy diets, I'm all for you looking after you. But do you see where the warning is in there? When, when looking after you becomes an obsession and, and, and not a pleasure. When, when everything's... I found it myself. I put this tracker on. It tracks my sleep. It tracks my heart rate. It tracks my walking. It's like big brother on my wrist type of thing. But if you're not careful, you wake up and you're like, get the app out, check out... And, and you can trend your heart rate and everything. And, oh, man, you know, it's got an alert on it. So, so you suddenly go lie down or something because you, you're in panic. These things are good, but they're no substitute for having the balance of putting the Word of God, making the Word of God priority over everything. Now, that doesn't say that I'm just going on tape, tape, on live, to say you can just go out there and stuff KFC down you until the cows come home or McDonald's or whatever. I'm, I'm saying, look after yourself, keep yourself safe, but we need to put a, I've made a, I've made a priority this year to exercise more, but when and myself have also made a, made a declaration to each other and to God that we would put, um, we would put the emphasis on the Word of God. We'd put priority on the Word of God above everything. See, Jesus was tempted after 40 days. I'm sure he was hungry. I'm sure he was. In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 4, when the devil came to him. And you know, he said, if you be, then turn these stones into bread. I'm sure Jesus was a bit tempted there, don't you? After 40 days, I bet he was proper Aunt Marvin after 40 days. And I bet he thought, that's oh, not a bad idea, I could do with some bread. But even Jesus turned around with the wisdom from heaven and said, man will not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the word of God. So I'm just going to show you some things from the Word, and that's what we've decided, to put priority on the Word. And as one church, we'll put priority on that as well. Does everybody agree with that? You see, there are things that diet won't cure. There are things that a smoothie won't cure. There are things that eating, you know, whatever. Listen, the finished work of Jesus is, is written, and if, we, if we'll be diligent 
to, to read it, then we will get the life of God, the, the Zoe life of God. Remember the, the word I gave there in New Year? Getting this abundant life, this full picture life that will come from the word of God. So 2 Timothy 2.15 says this, it says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we've got to work then to show ourselves approved. Is that right? No, that's not right. That's not right. It says be diligent, which means to study, to present yourself approved to God. So when, we've, when we study, we study to find that Jesus has already approved us. We don't have to work to be approved by God. Now, there is a work that is corresponding to our faith. There is a work that corresponding to go and preach the gospel and to bring the Great Commission. But Jesus has approved every single person in this room. If you've said yes to Jesus, then you've got to study to find out that you're already approved. Does everybody see the difference there? So we haven't got to, and it goes on to say, a worker... Working, it's not talking about physical work, it's talking about using your time to study the word to find out that God's approved you. Religion will tell us that we need to do, do, do. I'm sure there's a song in there somewhere, isn't there? To do, 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 anyway. To da, 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 I thought there would be. You see, religion will say this, it will say, you need to work to be accepted. You need to work to be approved. But you know, the Word of God tells us to study to find that we're already approved. And the work and the, and the corresponding actions will automatically follow. <coughs> you see the difference there? Religion's always saying, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And if you do this, God will love you. And if you follow these rules, God will love you. Listen, God's love is unconditional. God's love is, is everlasting. Jesus was, was the Alpha and the Omega. From the beginning to the end, God's love towards you will not stop. Amen? So when you blow it, guess what? That doesn't mean you're no longer approved. When you make a mess of it, when you get divorced. You know, I've had people, uh, friends and that who have got divorced and they're, they're already struggling. And then religion comes along and says, oh, well, you know, God's angry at you because of that. Listen, get a reality check. Did Jesus ever come to the earth and... Jesus came to save sinners, didn't he? Jesus came as an act of love. So I'm going to... Oh, this is... I put this up. This, <laughs> I'll probably get a bit of grief about this. but anyway. At the top there, this is 2 Timothy 2.15, and that's the... That's the New King James Version. But to make it a bit easier for us to understand, I did an NKTV, a New King Thomas Version. Okay, I'll probably get into trouble, but anyway, I'm used to being into trouble a bit. So. And I've just paraphrased this to make it a bit easier. And so you can, you can read back and forth from 2 Timothy 2.15. But it, I've, I've written it like this. Study to find out from God's word and present this truth. That you don't have to earn or work approval. You're already approved. And all my, that verse before, it says there needs not be ashamed in, in the King James. Well, you know what? Jesus took all my shame. Jesus became my shame. So, and he became my condemnation. So there's now no condemnation. Now, should we feel good when we do bad stuff? Absolutely not. But there's no condemnation. There's no shame. Jesus has taken all my shame. So instead of condemnation, I receive rest and freedom. The correct understanding of the truth of God's word. Remember at the end there it said they're rightly dividing the word of truth. I believe that just means to correctly understand what God's word truthfully says. So I'm into, I'm, I'm into you know, diet, healthy lifestyle, exercise, nutrition and all the rest of it. But Mark 7.15, I said it earlier, oh, no I didn't say it earlier on. Mark 7.15 says this, that there's nothing that can enter a man that defiles him but that which comes out of a man defiles him. And he was really, if you read that in context, he was arguing, they were saying, oh, well, these Pharisees and these, these disciples, they're, they're, not, they're eating this and they're eating that and they shouldn't be eating this and they should be eating that. 
Listen, it's not what goes in you that defiles you. It's what comes out of you that Jesus was more concerned with what comes out of us spiritually. See, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth then speaks. And so, yes, we're into exercise, diet, nutrition, looking after yourself, keeping yourself safe. But here's the thing. There's other areas that are far, far more important to work on. So that's the first part of us, the body. The second part is the soulish realm. So we're talking about the mental, mind, will and emotion. How many of you know it's, it's just as important to look after you mentally? To look after your mental welfare. To look after your mental health. To look after your um, depression, anxieties, traumas, discouragement. How do we do that? Well, Romans 12 verse 2 tells us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But I got this picture of a garrison. Oh, crikey, I've gone back on there. I got this picture of a garrison. It's a bit of an old-fashioned word, but it's really, um, it, it's a fortress, um, a fortified base. Did I put that on there? Yeah. It's a fortified base camp for the army. And so... In the theme of keeping you safe, this mind, put, make it a garrison. Make it a garrison. Protect your thinking realm. Amen? Protect the word of God in, you know, in, in your thinking. Protect yourselves at all costs. And here's something that we're not very good at. It's not great on there. The power of saying no. And um, that might be controversial. I don't know whether it's controversial or not, really. But we, we, in general, by nature, gravitate to, to wanting to please people, don't we? By nature. Um, there, are, there are exceptions to that. But I think, by, by, in general, we like to do things and, and be helpful and really be, be saying yes to things, don't we? If we're honest, I enjoy, I enjoy helping. I enjoy saying yes. If I can assist something, if I can help financially, if I can help physically, I've got quite a few talents and skills and like everybody else has got in this room, but those talents and skills are unique to me, right? And so if I can use those talents and skills, then that's good. And so yes, I can do those things. But one thing I've worked at over the years really strongly is my own self, um, and particularly from a mental realm. And if, I'm, if, I'm, if people start pushing me into a, into a direction that I'm not happy with, I'm not comf comfortable with, then I will say no. Right? And there's no shame in that. No is one of the smallest words in the whole of the dictionary. Yeah, I think it's one of the most powerful words that we can ever learn. You know what? I don't get offended if, if I ask somebody to do something. I'm not just talking about church. I'm talking about life in general. You know, if I took my, whatever, took my car into the garage and said, hey, guys, check my car over. And the guy says, well, I'm a bit busy at the minute, so you'll have to bring it back another day. I'm not going to get all offended about that. See, the guy's, the guy's learned the power of no, hasn't he? that he's running a business and he's got, he's got jobs in. And so empower your no um, when you're looking after you, keeping you safe. Don't be embarrassed to say no to things. Don't be, don't be I don't know whether this is just me, but <laughs> I feel sometimes like, not, I'm not just talking about church, I'm talking about life in general, right? That I'm under pressure to say yes all the time. Does anybody else? feel like that. Parents and families with kids. Listen, we need to empower our no. We need to learn that it's not wrong and, and, and it's actually beneficial to you because you're keeping you safe. So watch your watch your work, watch, watch what goes in, media and stuff like that and um, empower your no was really was really that. So the last part of us 
is your spirit man. So we're triune beings, we've got a body and a soul, this realm, mind, will and emotions. What about our spirit man? Well, I'm going to keep it simple. Your spirit man is fine. Amen? Your spirit man is fine. And I put this up there, Ephesians 1.13. It says, I think it's on there, but you can't quite see it. It says, in him, capital H, that means in Christ, in Jesus. You know, how many of you know everything changed with Jesus? Everything changed. Your, your old self that was full of whatever it was full of, God literally gave you a makeover, like this room. He stripped everything out that was poor and wonky and, and in need of repair, just like this room. He stripped the whole lot out, brought the A-team in, and just completely refurbished it. Amen. That's good news today. In, in my spirit, I, I got again, I want to share this with you, but in him you also, after listening to the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the spirit of promise. See, God didn't just save you, God sealed you as well. How awesome is that? See, I, I often have people saying things like this to me. Well, it's easy for you, Pastor Tom, because you're up there and you live such a holy life and you're so perfect and you never get anything wrong that, you know what, it wouldn't matter if you were sealed and saved because you're such an awesome person. And I, <laughs> Listen, when I, when I say that, I, can't, I feel my nose growing as I'm actually saying it. Because, you know what, in the natural, in the flesh, in this earth suit, we're all going to disappoint. And we all miss the mark. And we all needed a saviour. And we all needed Jesus. But, you know, when, when I said yes to Jesus, he didn't just save me from, from destruction and from hell and from all, and, and give me an eternal promise. He didn't just do that. That, was, that would be awesome if that was all he did do. But he didn't do that. He sealed me for all eternity. You see, in my spirit right now, this is the same spirit that I'm going to live for ever with. God's not going to give me um, an updated spirit. He's not going to do an update. You know, Apple will keep pestering me. You need an update. You need an update. You need an update. And I think part of the time, as, as church people, when we say yes to Jesus... We think all of the things that we do wrong, all of our negativity, all of the failings, listen, they don't penetrate your spirit man. Your spirit man, when you said yes to Jesus, was vacuum packed, sealed for the day when you're... And I got this picture. This is awesome, really, because when we lay down this earth suit, right... Not one person in here, unless if Jesus comes again, that things will change. But if he doesn't, every one of us will lay down these earth suits. Do you know that? Every one of us will lay down these earth suits. And we will, in a twinkling of an eye, be translated to a mansion. I like that. I don't, I, I don't want a bungalow. Amen. I want a mansion. And it's one God's prepared for me. And people say, oh, well, this, that, and the other. listen, I'm having, I'm having the full deal. Amen. I'm having Fishing Lake. I'm having a season ticket for Leeds United. Amen. <laughs> Not Chelsea. Anyway, um, but when we lay down, Tony, there's a lot of funerals. When we lay down this, this earth suit one day for the final time, you know what? I saw this picture of like a wardrobe, and it's in my mansion. And it's my glorified body. Amen? And one day, I'm going to step and change locations. I'm going to step into this glorified body. And it's going to be absolutely perfect. So all you women out there who think you've got lumps and bumps, you don't like your nose, you don't like your bum, you don't like your eyes, you don't like your hair, you wish you had more hair, you wish she was taller, you wish this hadn't happened. In the physical realm, I've got some good news for you. God's prepared an awesome body for you. If, if, if you think you'd like to be a little bit taller in this world, guess what? 
when, you get, when, when we lay down this, this earth suit, we're going to get a perfect, glorified body that's without spot or blemish or wrinkle, without wrinkle. Amen? So our spiritual condition is settled. And all we need to do is just rest in that. Keep you safe. And so I'm going to conclude with this. Let's not, let's not spend all our time, all our resources, and all our energy trying to earn something that God has already given you freely. And that's the gift of eternal life. And as a church, as one church, that's the message that we've got to people. That's, that's the message that we've got to give people. The message of hope that's found in the person of Jesus. That, you know what, he cares about you the full, the full package, your spirit, your soulish realm, and your body, your physical realm. And so, yes, we believe in looking after ourselves and stuff like that. Our spiritual condition, one third of me is wall to wall Holy Spirit. Do you realize that? When you look in the mirror, I, you know, I've got failings and I've got things I maybe like to change. <clears throat> but this, this soulish realm, and this physical realm is one day going to be gone. And all that's going to be left of me and you is, is our spirit man, who after Jesus is created in righteousness and true holiness. And you're going to put on your eternal suit. Amen. What an awesome day that will be. You know, we've had, we've, had, um, we've had some great men of God over the past year pass away. And, and quite a few of them, this, this thing keeps coming to me. Listen, they've just changed location. Amen. We just change address. We get a different zip code, different postcode. So be encouraged today to take time out to keep you safe. That's the message for one church. Keep you safe. Because if you're, if you're, listen, if you're flat on your back, sick, tired, depressed, discouraged, guess what? You know, I've spent some time this last week in the hospital. And uh, boy, what a sad place that is. You know, have you ever been in? I, I've not been in a hospital for a long, long time. There's a lot of people in there that are really, really struggling. Guess what? We've got some awesome news for them. Amen? We've got some awesome news for them. That God can heal their physical bodies. That God can heal their mental, <coughs> their mental anxiety, their mental, their mental issues. That God can give them a brand new beginning. You know, we've just renovated this place totally... Guess what? That's the good news of the gospel, amen. So, for all those people who have watched, uh, thank you for tuning in with us. It's not been quite perfect, but we'll get there with the sound and stuff. And, um, yeah, keep you safe in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>